Let's talk about non-functional requirements for a moment. The word non-functional, taken literally, would mean don't work. In the world of IT, non-functional requirements express conditions that any application or any component of the application, including the people using it, have to abide by regardless of what it is doing. Non-functional requirements aren't things that don't work. They are expressing conditions such as how many, how often, how fast, how friendly, about how the application does what it does. Functional requirements express what it has to do, and no, non-functional requirements have to, do, have to express how well it should do them or know them. What we're going to be talking about in this section are the characteristics of non-functional requirements, what makes a requirement non-functional. I'll also introduce you to a common set of non-functional categories, the types of typical non-functional requirements you're going to run into on an IT project. Find ways, or we'll talk a little bit about ways of discovering and measuring non-functional requirements, because very often they end up being subjective. And we have to make sure that we can have an objective measure of whether or not a functional or a non-functional requirement is being met. And ultimately, what we're going to try to do is getting to, or we can write Gherkin to validate non-functional requirements. We'll give you little tips and tricks on that. Non-functional requirements are very often the cause of failure. We have many examples in our history in the IT world of applications that were created. The applications did everything they had to do, but they did not do them well enough. Anybody that experienced the rollout of Obamacare when the Affordable Care Act went into, into effect, it was constantly overloaded. It was constantly crashing. People were waiting hours to get applications in. Those are examples of what happens when we don't pay sufficient attention to the non-functional dimension. Software was able to process your application but it might take you hours to be able to get in to be able to access it. There are many other examples in our industry of where non-functional requirements ultimately led to project failure. What are non-functional requirements? Fundamentally, a non-functional requirement defines criteria or properties or conditions that the individual functions of an application or the application as a whole have to meet in order for the application to be satisfactory for in order for it to be able to meet the business need. An example of a non-functional requirement, the nuclear power plant radiation level monitor function has to be available 24-7, 365, implying that it's kind of an important function of measuring the, the radioactivity in a nuclear power plant, so we'd like to make sure it doesn't fail. Only personnel with pay grade E8 and higher can update the Andromeda files. This is a security constraint or a security requirement, again a non-functional example. Access will be controlled with retinal scan, fingerprint, and voice recognition. That's very technical and lists the technologies that are going to be used to be able to identify an individual. The non-functional requirements don't just affect functions, they can also affect the data. Th statements such as a customer ID is a unique, meaning non-recurring, there's only one in the system, 15-digit, the length, positive, can't be a negative, real number, can't be pi or the square root of i or uh, anything like that, a non-real number, that identifies a single customer. Those are non-functional dimensions to what the customer ID actually is. Now, they're non-functional because they, they have to be enforced, but they are not doing anything or knowing anything about the application. What kind of categories are we talking about when we talk about non-functional requirements? The most common ones fall into one of these four dimensions, constraints, performance requirements, user experience or volatility. Some examples of what we mean with that when we're talking about constraints, physical limits. Physical limits are things like the speed of light. If you're dealing with software applications and the internet using satellite communications, you're going to discover that there is a speed limit that is the speed of light on information going out to the satellites and coming back. So there's going to be about a two second delay in that communication. The other physical limits, by the way, might be things like the temperature. If you're de developing an application that has to be used in a cold room or in a clean room, things like that, those are environmental constraints. Laws and regulations. We generally recommend that you stay legal. Actually, we recommend that any organization that has the authority to impose legal limits upon what your application can do, you need to be aware of because they are a constraint. Constraints, by the way, fundamentally, are externally mandated conditions that nobody can change on the project team. The next category, business rules and policies, sounds like it violates that, but actually, unless you're dealing with the project 
that creates and maintains business rules and policies, you are going to be stuck with having to live with them. So there may be other people in your organization that have the authority to change them, but if your project team does not, then it is a constraint. Distribution is another type of a constraint, and the distribution constraint has to do with where work is done, where data resides, all of those kind of things. And as companies get larger and become more global, this becomes bigger and bigger of an issue. Anything that has to do with the ability of people in different places distributed physically uh, to be able to perform functions or to be able to know data or get data is going to fall into that category. The performance category, again, funky one because it has strictly to do with how fast or how well the application works. Frequency of use is one of the very primal performance criteria. If I'm writing code, if I'm writing an application as a developer, for instance, I'm going to uh, write the program that's going to calculate your sales tax. I need to know how often this is performed in order for me to understand how much effort do I need to put in to make this program efficient. If every application would love to be efficient, but efficiency costs money. Every non-functional requirement that we're talking about here ultimately costs money. The question is, is it worth the investment? Unless I can tell the developers things like how often are we going to use it, they have no guidelines and they're just going to be working on their gut feel as to how efficient they want to make it. And having been a developer myself, I can tell you that developers generally try to make things as efficient as they possibly can. Well, if you have a function that it doesn't really matter if it takes five minutes longer, the work that the developers put into making that more and more efficient so that it can be done in five seconds is wasted effort. But we really need to have a better communication as to what are the criteria, especially in the performance dimension, that the applications have to meet so that the developers know what to focus on. A couple of other ideas in the performance area, volumes of data, how much information is created every time this function runs, where does all the data, how much data is it using? How precise does the data have to be? Now, if we're talking about precision of data, we're talking about numbers. And if precision of data in numbers is measured in the number of decimal points behind, or the number of characters behind the decimal point that the data has to have to be considered accurate. We also need to take into account how long the data lives. Data has a life cycle. It's created at some point, it is used, at some point it becomes irrelevant. That's the life expectancy of data. Response urgency is about how quickly the applications have to respond when a person needs them. It's related to frequencies of data, uh, frequencies of, of uh, usage and volumes of data. But ultimately, the response urgency has much more to do with what is the person that is using the application trying to do. If they are trying to respond to a customer request and they need the data, they probably need a sub-second response time because if they're having a conversation with the customer, the customer wants to know something now. On the other hand, if you're dealing with data that has to do with a monthly report, that may not be necessary to have that available for the first week of the next month. The hardcore question to ask to get to response urgency is how long can a person wait on data from the application before their ability to do their job becomes impaired? And there's a corollary. It's called update urgency. How long can the application wait on data from the human being before the application fails? The answer to all of those performance questions is going to guide the developers in understanding where they should put their effort in making sure the application really meets the business community's needs. We get into the user experience, and this is an area where we have had a lot of stumbling over the years. We have to think about things like physical access. This has to do with the uh, American Disabilities Act in the US, things like that. We also have to think about, from a user perspective, how involved will the user be with this application? The degree of interaction means, are you, is this something where you want to go to, a, uh, to the application and you want to have total freedom to go wherever you want to? Uh, kind of like in a gaming scenario, the degree of interaction is very high, or you want to drill down within the invoice to the items, to the inventory, to things like that. Those are high degrees of interaction. Whereas if all you want to do is look at something, read it, you're going to be sitting there for a while, the application is not going to be do any, a whole lot. That's a low level of interaction. Trainability, we're going to talk actually about trainability in a few minutes, because that's one of the non-functional requirement types that we want to deal with in a testing environment. And security, obvious, who can do what to the application, who can see what, who can know what, and the culture. The cultural dimension has to do with moving this application into different cultures. 
And that is a very complex area. And that's why in many organizations they have a group called the localization or the internationalization group, which are responsible for making sure the applic application is available in the various cultures. The volatility quadrant of non-functional requirements has to do with how easy it is to react when the world changes. Changes can be in the hardware, can be in the software, or in the business world. So what we really think about in the volatility dimension is how quickly can we make a change to the application if the requirements change? How quickly can we migrate this application from one hardware platform to another? Uh, how often does this application, or when does this application have to be available? How easily does it have to be for the application to grow over time as getting more and more transactions? How quickly can it react when the business community changes? And what reliability does it have to have? Meaning, how, how often can it go down and not cost a tremendous amount? So these six dimensions of volatility are things that we need to think about when we're trying to come up with tests for the non-functional requirements. And they're things, obviously, that the developers have to think about in creating the applications. You have now examples of constraints, performance, user experience, and volatility, four main categories of non-functional requirements that we have to take care of. And ultimately, if I'm trying to define the requirements, the user stories, the features, I need to figure out what are all of these things that are going to impact that particular item.